Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about compound gear train. First we are going to talk what is a compound gear train and then we are going to talk about what are the, some applications of compound gear train and then we are going to look at our arrangement of the compound gear train then we will run some tests and finally we will conclude with the result analysis on the test that we do today. So what is a compound gear train? A compound gear train may have three criteria. First, at least one or more gear should be sharing same shaft. The gears that those are sharing the same shaft may have different diameters, different teeth numbers, number of teeth, but um, the third criteria should be that they should be rotating at the same speed because they are sharing the same shaft, so they will be running same speed. So these are the criteria for a compound gear. So what would be an application of a compound gear train? Well, you can use compound gear train to speed up or slow down the final output. So for example, in this case, if we assume this is our driver gear denoted by D and this is our final follower gear denoted by F, and here is the shaft where two gears are attached. The gear is attached with the first driver is called the follower and the other gear that you cannot see down here I'll show you in a bit which is connected to the final follower is called the second driver. So we can see is that if the bigger gear of the shared shaft is connected with the driver and then the small gear of the shared shaft is connected with the follower you will have a lower speed your, if your driver and follower is the same. Now if I keep my driver and the follower same but if I switch those meaning if the small uh, gear of the shared shaft is connected with the driver gear and the bigger gear of the shared shaft connected with the final follower gear you will have higher speed. So this is one example of um, the application of a compound gear train. So now let's look at the top view of our compound gear train arrangement. This is the big gear we call the driver which is connected with the gear, another gear here and there is another small gear that you couldn't see from the other side so it is this gear which is connected with the final follower. So this is the first driver which is connected with the follower and this driver, the small one here and this gear sharing the same shaft and this small gear is connected with the final follower. Now let's take another look of our gear arrangement. This is the driver gear which is bigger which is connected with the uh, shared shared shaft gears with the bigger gear of the shared shaft and um, there is a small gear that he, here which is connected to the final um, follower so the power transfer is from the first driver to the final follower this is again the arrangement if we call the first gear as A which is connected to the B this is the top view which is connected to the B here and then there is a small gear here sharing the same shaft which is connected to the final follower. So the drivers are the A and then C and the follower gears are the B and D. So what are the gear sizes? Because you know the uh, speed and velocity ratio depends on the gear size, teeth counts, uh, all those stuff. So the gear A, the big gear, has 140 teeth. The gear B, which is the medium size um, and then the bigger of the shared shaft gears has 60 teeth. So the bigger gear is connected with the gear that has 60 teeth. Now the small gear which is C which has only 20 teeth. And finally the driver gear here has 100 teeth. So these are the gear size arrangement of our compound gear train here. Now let's look at the rotation direction of our gears. If I give my driver a 
clock counterclockwise rotation you see the final follower is also having counterclockwise rotation and the shared shaft gears the big and small this which are sharing the same shaft they are having clockwise and vice versa so if i give my first driver as a clockwise rotation the final follower will have the clockwise rotation but the shaft which has two gears both have the same direction but opposite to the driver so in a nutshell we have the driver that has 140 gears 140 teeth the follower this here has 60 teeth the driver a small driver here has 20 teeth and then the final follower has 60 teeth if you give the driver here clockwise rotation the follower and the driver sharing the same shaft will have the opposite counterclockwise um, rotation same because they are sh sharing the same shaft the follower will have the same direction as the uh, initial driver now since we know the teeth count we can also find the ratio uh, the ratio from follower to the driver first driver would be 60 because this is 100 teeth and this is 60 teeth so 60 over 100 3 7 meaning if I give three full rotation of the driver the gear here which is attached to the driver here will have seven rotation again for the small one and the final follower if we take the ratio the follower has 100 teeth and the driver small driver here has 20 teeth so meaning for uh, five rotation of the small gear this follower will have only one rotation so how do we find the overall velocity ratio so you have to take all the followers at the top and then all the uh, drivers at the bottom or you can do the ratio multiplication follower driver follower driver and if you do the math you will get the overall velocity ratio 2.143 so what this number means 2.143 this means is that if I give one rotation or if if I give two point so two full rotation and point one four three of another rotation so two point one four rotation of the driver gear the follower will have only one rotation so now let's do the test so here you see we have put a mass in this such a way that it's balanced it can move if I pull or push but I put masses in a way that those are balanced so now in my effort size because this is a driver if I want to pull put use the effort to raise this load up so this is my effort and this rod is 10 gram and I have three more uh, disc which each of them are 10 gram so I have total uh, 40 grams on uh, as my effort on the driver to make it balanced I had to put six and six disc and then the the rod itself so total 70 uh, gram of load on my follower so now it's balanced to make it move and it work uh, what I'm using is that I'm using five gram on my effort it's not moving so I need more load so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take off the five what I could have done I I could have added one gram at a time but now I'm using um, 10 gram so five gram increment so I'm gonna use 10 gram on my effort and now see it's rotating so that 10 gram is raising the total load so finally I have used four for this so 50 gram load or 50 gram effort is needed on for this gear train to raise 70 gram of load so now is the time to do some calculation so how we're looking to find mechanical advantage denoted by ma vr is the velocity ratio that we already found and finally we're looking for uh, to find the efficiency so the mechanical advantage is the ratio of load and the effort. So we raised a load about 70 grams. So we put 70 gram at the top and our effort was 50 gram that we applied here. So our mechanical advantage is 1.4. So it's 
is greater than one. What it means is that as long as your mechanical advantage is greater than one, it means that you need uh, less effort to raise a higher load. So your effort would be uh, lower than uh, your load that you're uh, lifting. If somehow your mechanical advantage is less than uh, one, then what you're doing is that you're you need more effort to raise a lower load. And in our previous video on gears, we kind of show you um, that may also happen. So if you would like to know, you can also watch those videos. And we already found that the velocity ratio is 2.143. So how do we find the efficiency? Efficiency is the ratio over mechanical advantage over uh, velocity ratio multiplied by 100. So because we want it in percentage. So if we do that, mechanical advantage 1.4 and velocity ratio is 2.143 multiplied by 100. So we see our efficiency is about 65 gram. So that uh, concludes our um, session today. Um, maybe in uh, future, we'll see you in another video on gears. Until then, thank you. Take care.